Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. Before I get started, I want to remind you to enter to win the August giveaway. Look for the giveaway video, follow the directions, pretty simple. I'm giving away a $75 gift card this month. And with that, we're going to begin this video. Now, recently I saw a question about how to add tabs or bridges when you're programming or designing a project in CarveCo software. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to put those bridges in. Now keep in mind there's more than one way to do this. This is just the way that I do it and I hope it helps somebody in some way. And if it does give me a like, a share, and a comment. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And let's get started. In order to show you how to put tabs or bridges on your project, we need to put an object on the work surface. Let's start with a simple square. Create the square, and there we have it. Now highlight the vectors, and in order to put bridges in, you'll do this during the toolpath generation. So let's click on that little profiling toolpath on the top. You can also double click here to open these selections up. It's just much easier to click on these icons on the top. Not going to worry about any of these selections here other than this one. I thought maybe I would explain this to you as well. When you're doing a profiling toolpath, you have three choices along, inside, and outside. And they are just as they're named. The tool will pass along the outside of the vector if you choose outside, it will go inside if you choose inside, and along will follow directly on top of the vector. So keep that in mind when you're creating a project. If you wanted to say cut this square out of a piece of wood you would be on the outside here otherwise your box or your square would be smaller than your desired size when you're complete. So now that I've explained the profile toolpath, let's move down to where you actually will put the bridges in. In this video I'm not going to go over all of these items here. The purpose of this video is to explain how to put in bridges. And the bridge icon is right here. Now as you notice, there's no selections here. Nothing under this. Just safe Z height for home and click to define the material. This box right here, Add Bridges, needs to be selected. When you do so, you'll get many more choices that need to be filled in. I typically use Auto Add Bridges, and then I go down to the next selection here. This selection allows you to choose different spacing on your bridges. Constant spacing is typically what I use, and in this box, you will input a number, notice it says inches right here, that will determine how far between bridge centers on the object. So let's go down here and add some bridges and see what it does. four inches in between each bridge because we selected constant spacing. Now there's one here that's a little difficult to see but it's there. Alright let's remove those by clicking this button here. Let's choose another selection. Constant number. You'll notice the inches goes away. Now we're dealing with a number not a measurement. Again, let's add some bridges and see what it does. It should give you one on each side of the box. Just like that. Now typically I use a constant spacing or a constant number. I don't use the adaptive spacing. That's used for irregular shapes. But I'll get into a further reason why I don't use that as we move along here. 
Okay, so let's leave it on constant number four and move to the next question. And this question is, how long do you want the tab? Let's just put a number in here. We'll choose one quarter inch. The next question it asks is how tall or how thick do you want the tabs? Again, let's put a quarter of an inch. You can choose whatever you'd like based on the size of your project. This question is what type or what what style of bridge? This happens to be what we call 3D bridges. This bridge allows a gradual taper to a center point and then a gradual taper back off. 2D bridges are flat. The machine will come over, rise up, go across the flat, drop back down, and continue around the perimeter of the vector. 99% of the time I use 3D bridges because I feel they are faster. The machine does not have to stop and raise up to continue and then drop back down. It simply makes a smooth motion over the tab. I don't use this, add bridges and start points. I don't see the need for it in many, many of the projects that I do. And because this is an auto add feature right here, we can simply hit add bridges and it puts them in. Now you can see that these have increased because we answered the questions up here about length and height. Now if I change the length to say one inch and we hit add bridges again you can see they've grown to one inch in length. And that is really all there is to adding bridges in the automatic selection. Now you can manually add bridges right here. And how you do that is clicking on Edit Bridges and it will give you a whole bunch more questions. Basically the same questions you answered previously. What type of bridge are you looking for? How long and how tall? Once you've answered all of these questions you will click on add bridges and in this case however it doesn't look like anything's happened you hit add and nothing happens over here the reason for that is by hitting add it allows you to bring your mouse over here and choose where you want the bridges specifically on your project so let's say I want one here I'll left click the mouse and one appears again over here, left click the mouse, and I now have one there. That is why I don't use the selection here of adaptive spacing. If I have an irregular shaped object, I'll just manually add the bridges where I see fit, where I think they need to be. Now if you have a project that you don't want the program to install the bridges automatically, you want to put them in manually right from the get-go. Come up here to where it says constant number in the manually add bridges questionnaire, if you will. And make that number zero. And move down to the add bridges. When you click add bridges, you'll see that nothing happens again. It won't automatically add those four because you have now changed the constant number to zero. So now that it says zero you've hit add you can come back over here left click your mouse and put your tabs in wherever you decide you can put them right on top of each other if you'd like which is silliness but to prove a point so again that's really all there is to adding bridges i hope you got something out of this video i hope it helped you in some way i hope you learned something give me a like share the video so other people can learn some stuff Give me a comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and as always, we'll catch you on the next one.